Welcome back to part four of Gas Bandit's Space Engineers Tutorials. Today I'm going to be showing you how to connect things with conveyors. They seem a little bit confusing to some people at first, but once you get the hang of them, they're actually very useful. Um, to do this, I'm going to build a drill ship. Even though the level provided me with one, it's much more useful to show how conveyors work if you actually build them yourself. And I've already ground down the green ship I built last episode to get the parts back. So I'm going to go ahead and just load up... Oh, I can't use all the parts. Well, it's the large steel tubes don't need that many. Right, that's enough for now. I'm going to go ahead and start building a new ship. G and say new small ship and that is where we'll start it out and I'm going to put a cockpit here now I'm going to hit G and I'm going to pick a drill from the beginning here and I'm going to place the drill on the front of the cockpit like so now you'll notice that the drill has a little yellow door on the side that is an inventory port, which you can get into the inventory of the drill. Drills have inventory just like a cargo container, and it is where initially any of the ore or rock that it digs up is placed inside its own inventory. And I'm going to go ahead and weld this a little bit. I'm going to need small steel tubes and motors, though. Bulletproof, bulletproof glass for the for the cockpit. That's enough to get it working. Now, if I was building just the most basic of ships, I could have just taken that green ship and tacked a drill on the front of it and I could have manually gotten ore in and out of the drill by using its inventory port here. But I'm looking for something a little more automated. See, the game also has these things called connectors, which here's the one that's on the station right now. If you fly a ship with a connector and mate those two connectors up, it can connect the inventory of the ship and the other ship or the station, whatever it's connecting to, and then it becomes very simple to transfer inventory across from one ship to the other without having to get out and load it all by hand and, and do it an arm load at a time, which is very useful because you can't really carry all that much. Even in ten times, it can be very tedious very quickly. So, in order to best automate this, we're going to need uh, we're going to need to put some manner of cargo bay on the back of the ship here and then connect it to a connector. That will let the drill ship carry more. So I'm going to hit G and I'm going to get rid of the drill and instead in its place I'm going to find uh, let's try a large cargo container and see how that fits. Okay, that's just a little bit bigger than I want. You want to try and create as slim a profile as possible when you're building a drill ship. So obviously the large cargo container is not suitable for our purpose here. Now, the medium cargo container is much more appropriately sized. However, you got to notice that on one side it has a small inventory door and on other sides it has large inventory doors. These doors are not compatible with each other and they really only come into play on small ships. On a large ship or a station all the cargo doors will be of the large size. Like this over here. So what we want to do is I know for a fact that the that the 
connector is going to want a large door style. So I want the large door to be on the back. And because the drill has small doors on the sides, I want the small door to be on the sides. So, when building it, this would not be a good configuration, but this is. So once you have it rotated to where you want to place it, simply click, switch to you. And two more motors. And now our drill ship has a medium cargo bay. Now the task becomes connecting the drill to the medium cargo bay, and this will be accomplished by using small conveyors. And they're down here at the bottom of the list. Small conveyors are the ones that don't have windows in them. Regular conveyors are the large size, and uh, small conveyors are only usable on small ships with uh, ships that have small conveyor doors. Now there's three main components to a conveyor system. There's a conveyor, there's a conveyor tube, and there's a curved conveyor tube. Now, the conveyor itself is really just a junction. You don't have to have a conveyor in your conveyor network in order to move the items. You can do it solely with just tubes, but if you want to connect more than two things together using the same tube network, you're probably going to have to use a small conveyor. That's not what we're doing. We're just trying to connect two things right now so we can get by with simply small tubes and small curved tubes. So, I'm going to hit 9 to make sure that small tubes is selected. And first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the ends of the tube match up properly, which right now they're not. So, using the rotation keys shown in the upper right hand corner of the screen, you rotate it until it's clear that the part is rotated how we want it to be. So there's the first tube. Then we can switch to the straight tubes and just continue on like thus. Then we need a couple of curved tubes here. One like so and one like so. And then we'll weld them. Now notice as I'm welding them together, the lights on the edge of the tube are red. They can be red for a number of reasons. The first and foremost, they can be red because they have no power. If your, can, if your ship has no power, your conveyor networks will not work. And the other reason they can be red is if only one end of the conveyor is attached to anything and the other end is not. Which is also the case, but the no power problem takes precedence. So there, it's connected, but it's still red because the ship has no power. So we're going to build a small reactor here. And in the, on the previous ship, I just built it on the side with the port sticking out like this for easy access. But that was just because we were building a simple ship. On this ship, which has its own cargo bay, I'm going to build it over here on this side. Notice there's no... Uh, port on the top for me to use for this purpose. I'm going to build it over here and I'm going to arrange it so that the cargo door on the reactor is mating with the door on the medium cargo bay. And as usual I need a middle grid. Now what this accomplishes is it means that the small reactor can now interact with the cargo of the rest of the ship. So I could, for example, go get some uranium. I'm going to get that out of a uh, reactor. You can either type the word reactor or you can click this to show only energy cons uh, cons creating inventories. I'm going to go get one liter of uranium and I'm going to go put that liter of uranium in the cargo bay for this ship. And notice when I do that the drill inventory here goes dark. That indicates that the drill is 
I'm unable to place this uranium in the drill. And the, the, the inventory can go dark for a number of reasons. The drill goes dark because it has specialized cargo slots in it where only ore can go in the drill. You can't store parts in the drill either. And notice you can't store parts in the small reactor because the small reactor can only take uranium ingots. But the cargo container can take anything you want, so we can either put the ingot directly into the small reactor, even though we're not interacting with the small reactor, or we can put it in the medium cargo container, and the reactor will automatically start pulling uranium into itself to power the ship. Now, it does it kind of slowly, so if you're in a hurry, you can just place it directly in the reactor yourself. And now the ship has power. The lights on the side turn a yellowish green. See, they, they look yellow over here in the light, but you can see in the shadow they're kind of greenish. That indicates a good connection between the drill and the medium cargo bay, which is what we want. All right, so now we have a drill connected to our cargo bay. Now we need a way for the ship to mate with a connector, and we do that simply by putting a connector on it. Here's the connector. Okay, well, clearly that is the wrong way. That's how I want it to be. Notice that a connector on And the game crashed. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, as I was saying, notice that the connector on the small ship has a large door on one side, and on either ends it has a small door. So it could conceivably be connected to your conveyor network using small conveyors. On a station or a large ship, it will only have the one large door on the back. So simply attach the conveyor here and we weld it up there and now the ship can simply use its connector to attach to the connector on the platform which will then let us transfer inventory directly across in fact it kind of merges the two inventories so that as soon as the ship is connected the reactor will say or the, the refinery will say oh hey I see unprocessed ores in my connected inventories and it will automatically pull as much as it can directly into the refinery without you even doing anything. Very handy. Okay, so now we have the basics of the inventory system covered. We just need to add the thrusters and gyroscopes. The gyroscope is very important because without it you can't hold steady or turn. So any ship you build is going to need at least one gyroscope and the heavier the ship the more gyroscopes you're probably going to want because uh, one gyroscope is only really effective in very light mass ships. Heavier mass ships, you'll turn faster if you have more than one. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, now the thrusters. I've built a very simple ship, but uh, Ashburner brought up something that I should have covered when I was building the ship last tutorial, and that is when you place thrusters, you've got to be careful not to place them where they're thrusting at another component. They need five to seven blocks of clear space ahead of their nozzles or else they'll melt whatever they're pointed at. So for example, this would be very bad thruster placement for the uh, retro thruster. The exhaust from the thruster would burn through the reactor and make the ship lose power. Uh, this would also be a terrible placement. This would be bad placement and basically you just want to make sure that you've got five to seven blocks of clear space ahead of a thruster. So I'm going to place the retro thruster there, and I'm going to place the side thruster there, and I'm going to place... Actually, I'm going to place two side thrusters and two down thrusters. thruster and forward thruster. And notice I'm trying to keep things away from the lip of the connector because that will make docking simpler and less likely to burn stuff when you're docking. All right, so I've got the two down thrust. I'm going to make more down thrusters. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to make more side thrusters too. And the reason I'm doing that, I 
be more large too. The reason I'm doing that is because drills shake light ships very badly. In fact, if you don't have enough engines to stabilize it while you're using it, it can become almost uncontrollable. Let's see, how did I do it over here? I like symmetry, so I want to kind of make it aesthetically pleasing as I can on either side. Some four down thrusters are going to need some up thrusters. this retro thruster. I can put it here instead. Okay, so four up, four down, three left, three right. I'm probably going to want another one left and right. The conveyor network is eating my lunch. What I'll do, it's ugly, but I'll just stick it up here for now. Because right now, I favor stability more than aesthetics. Alright, so one retro, I can put one more retro thruster over here. Okay. So that works out to be a very, it should be a fairly stable drill ship. Let's get to welding. I got a little overzealous there and didn't fully weld all these things. That becomes important because if I go banging into things, I want my thrusters to be able to take a little bit of damage. And remember, everything above the red line when you're welding is damage it can take before it stops working. Not too worried about the cockpit, though. I believe that's everything. This is now a functioning drill ship. So I'll get into it and hit P to release the docking clamp. And right off the bat, it doesn't seem to be believing me when I hit P. Oh, you know why? Because I forgot to finish welding the landing gear so it can't release. And notice my thrusting has actually, because I, I didn't let go of the landing gear, my thrusting has actually damaged the steel plate of the deck. Ow! I bumped into the ship and it counter-thrusted against me, and that did a little bit of damage to me. Anyway, uh, that uh, brings up another point. Like I said, the thrust from a thruster can damage other blocks, but that particular thing doesn't happen if you use heavy armor as your landing pad. Heavy armor is more resistant to small thruster thrust, so if you've got a landing deck, it's good to make it out of heavy armor instead of light armor, which is what this platform is made out of. Okay, having finished the landing gear, I should now be able to release the landing gear and thrust upward, yes. Ooh. Notice thrusting upward or downward is already putting me into overload. I don't have a lot of power on this thing. So, 
what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get a few more parts that I know I'm going to need. I'm going to build two more power plants. And notice I've mated them door to door with the connector, which gets them as part of the inventory network of the ship. And rather than go get more uranium, I'm just going to move the uranium back into the main medium cargo container, which is going to make it automatically share the uranium between the three existing reactors. So let's see how that works. Much better. Thrusting up, thrusting down only uses 44% of the power. So I'm going to add the drill to my toolbar for the ship, and I'm going to carefully move out among all the other ships. Oh dear, I can't see any ore. That's because I forgot to put an ore detector on my drill ship. That's a very important thing for a drill ship to have, otherwise you'll just be drilling at random and maybe not finding anything useful. So what I'm going to do is hit G. And the ore detector looks like this. Kind of looks like a spotlight, but not. And I'm going to find a spot to stick it. I think... Probably... There should be okay. Detector components. I hope there's some of that over here. If not, I can probably make it from the ore I've got. Detector component. Yep, here we go. Only need one. There, now I have an ore detector on my new drill ship. And already you can see that I'm detecting ore. How about this batch of silicon right here? Actually, that's kind of deep, but we'll drill for it. I may not be able to make it. You notice that the drill has a much smaller cross-section than the rest of my ship, which means I won't be pushing this through any tunnels because it'll shear off my engines. But I'll show you in the next tutorial how to build a bigger drill ship. Well, maybe not the next tutorial, maybe a tutorial one or two after this. But we're going to start to get to the good stuff, just like a hand drill. Right click, and that'll start really removing the rock without putting it in your inventory. And notice, as I said, this ship has a tendency to shake and drift about. And the more engines you put on your ship, the less that... Oh, sorry, I just kicked the cat. The less that your ship will shake around. Also, adding more mass to your ship really helps with that. So because my sh uh, drill ship is so wide, I'm going to have to make a very wide hole to get to what I'm trying to actually drill. And I neglected to put a light on the ship, so... I know that YouTube videos are always much darker than actually playing the game, so I better put a spotlight on this ship, or else you're not going to be able to see crap once I upload this to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Alright, so here's the spotlight. I should be able to build that without a trip back. I'm going to put a spotlight here. Actually, could I put it right? No, I can't. Put the spotlight there. Build it up. There. Spotlight's on. Hmm. It doesn't seem to be very useful, though. What I do is go into your control panel by hitting K and find the spotlight. And here you can adjust not only the color of the spotlight, but the radius of influence, the intensity, and the falloff. The falloff, you pretty much want to leave as low as possible. But if you increase the radius and the intensity, it suddenly becomes a much brighter light. There we go. Now we can see stuff. Now, increasing the radius like that makes it a shorter range light. If you instead 
decrease the radius, it makes it more spotty of a spotlight. But I want to increase the radius for what we're doing here because we want to see as much as possible. Okay. So I still think we're just into regular rock here, so I'm going to right click try and get us closer to that silicon. Ah, now notice the shiny. Shiny is your key in finding good stuff in rock because things like silicon and platinum and the silver are all kinds of uh, kind of white gray. So you got to look for the stuff that is shiny and that tells you you get the good stuff. Then you use left click instead of right click. It goes away much slower, but what is happening here, I'm going to check the inventory of the ship, is that very slowly we are starting to fill up with silicon and even apparently there's some iron in there too. Oh, yep, we struck iron. There's the pink iron right there. So drill that art out to your heart's content. And because we're in such a wide ship, you can't go in too deep before you start banging into stuff. And that's about how far you can safely go in on this particular ship. But what you can do is you can just right click to make the hole wider. And this is fairly inefficient. You're going to want to build eventually a multi-drill ship so that you can just push right through in a single tunnel. And like I said, I'll show you how to do that in a later tutorial. But there, we should have a fair amount of silicon right there. Yeah, it's 1.7 thousand liters of silicon ore. Is that kilograms? Let's see. Yeah, it's only taking up 627 liters of, of uh, space. So I could theoretically transfer that out of the ship by hand, but I'm going to show you now how to dock so that your cargo can get transferred into the station automatically. So here's the connector on the ship. What you want to do is first look at it from the side and use your up and down thrusters to line up from the side and then look up and down and use your thrusters and turn to line up top down. So once you're lined up from the side and from the top you can start just backing up and when you get close enough the X's on the sides will turn yellow and you'll kind of magnetically get pulled into position. Once you're there, hit P, and there the connectors have mated. You look at my inventory, and they're not going across for some reason. But anyway, once you're connected, white inventory items are the inventories of the ship that you are in, and orange inventories are inventories of the ship you're connected to. And if sometimes you could even have it to where there are multiple connectors and multiple ships uh, connected at once, and the others will be further subsequent colors. But let me see right now if I can, rather than hunt through it, I'm going to hit this to filter only storage inventories, so I can only see things like cargo containers. And for some reason, the refinery isn't pulling stuff directly from my cargo container even though I have a good connection to the other ship. But this demonstrates how it's much easier to simply use a connector and drag across what you need. Like for instance, now if I decided I wanted more fuel, I could then go back to one of these reactors here and drag out another liter of uranium ingots. And it will start getting distributed to my power plants. Then, when I'm done, hit P to turn off the connectors again, and simply thrust away. And sometimes it can fight you a little much, and if, you, if, you don't, if you're underpowered moving forward, you might have to wrestle a bit to get out of the connector's magnetic influence. And the best way to do that is to kind of turn. You might have to turn one way and then turn hard the other way to get off the connector. Try not to bang into stuff, though. Alright, that is the basics of connectors and con conveyor-based inventory management. 
and see you next time.